Hey guys, um, a couple of people have just been asking how you go from this to a 3D object. Um, there's been some talk about photo uh, scanning and the like. Um, there's some freeware ones and then you've got things like Aggiesoft Photo Scan and the like. You can get Aggiesoft on a 30 day trial and the basic version's not too expensive if you decide you like it or the like. Um, so the first thing you need to do when you're looking at doing something like this is you need to take a bunch of photos. Now I've taken 81 here um, and if I jump back up here and have a look at a couple of my other ones that I've done, this rock had 65 uh, the dragon that I did here which came out looking like this he um, had 185 photos um, and I'll give this word of advice don't take photos on a fluoro yellow bin lid it doesn't work well it does but it messes with things um, so what do you do well, you've got all these photos, you open Aggiesoft, you come up to the workflow and you tell it you want to add a folder and you find the folder that you're after, so in this case my name one's right here, tell it select folder and I want to create a camera from each chunk. The camera is not um, in my case isn't stationary and the object being rotated it's me moving the camera so every camera needs to be every photo needs to be its own chunk camera chunk so we have all these now we go to the workflow we tell it we want to align the photos um, for the purpose of this, I'm going to tell it to do it on a medium or the like. Um, this will just speed it up a little bit. This can take a little while. Um, so I'm going to hit OK and you'll notice it'll start doing this. And what it's doing is it's going through all the photos and it's looking for points where it can match them so it can start mapping out what the object is doing in terms of uh, being an actual 3D object. Um, So at the moment you can see it's saying we've got six minutes and if I bring up our task manager here you'll notice that it's hammering the CPU I mean really hammering the CPU so I'm going to pause this video for the six minutes that this has and we'll continue once these bars are full. Okay, so it's finished its little bit of pieces here. Um, for some reason, on mine, it always seems to come in upside down. It's world space or something, I don't know. But this is what we've got so far a point cloud, more or less. As we can see, it's aligned the photos up as best it could and we have a lot of excess data I mean it's got my car over here it's got bits and pieces over here a lot of it we don't need so now that I've unmuted myself after needing to sneeze we come up here select the marquee tool and the reason we're selecting the ends is we're going to select this box here which will give us some the rock itself and we're going to crop down to that so we've gotten rid of everything but it for the moment now we're going to go to here and we're going to 
lasso and get rid of a lot of the external side bits and pieces that we don't need. Now we're going to rotate down and around. Got a little bit in here we can get rid of. Don't need that. And all we're doing is, by doing this, we're actually hopefully we should be able to speed up our next set of calculations because there's less excess data for it to have to worry about so this will do for a quickie uh, normally I'd Clean it up just a little bit better. But at this point we go workflow, we tell it that we want to build a dense cloud. Um, again, quality settings up to you. For the purpose of this I'm actually going to tell it to do it on a low. Because this section can take half an hour, an hour, three hours, depending on the quality you want. We're just going to do low. You'll notice it starts up again. It's loading the photos. It's reconstructing the depth map. Okay, so it's generated the dense point cloud and we can see that by coming here and clicking this button here and we can now see the dense point cloud. Now, remember this is a point cloud, so these, this isn't a mesh yet, this is still just points and dots, um, general data. But we can use this again to clean things up a little, so we're going to Walk around our rock, crop, rotate down, crop, crop, crop. We're basically just getting rid of all this excess junk we don't need. Um, for this tutorial I'm not going to spend as much time getting it perfect as I normally would. Normally I come in and try and get rid of any excess areas of dirt or the like. Um, so, okay, now we have our rock, we go workflow again, we want to tell it we want to build the mesh, and we get the option. This face count is uh, in tries, and as you can see it's giving us three options, high, medium and low, or we can go custom. 
Um, depending on what you're after, it's completely up to you. So this is in tries. We're going to go for a 10,000 poly mesh. And okay, so now if we click over here, we can see our mesh. But we have no texture on the map. We have this really low poly version. Um, but no real detailed textures. And we can have a look at the actual mesh itself. We're happy with this and how it's generally looking. And I mean, you know, this is good enough to be used for um, if you're using a displacement map or something like that at this point we can go workflow build the texture and it'll ask us what count we want in this case I'm just going to do a single 4k texture Okay, so it's done. If we click here, we can see it with the texture on. So this is our rock. Now we can export the mesh, and you'll notice we don't have any in here. We've got some stuff for doing some other items um, on the pro version, but we just want to go export model. You want to export it as DAE. You can export it as TLs or FBXs or whatever you want. Um, I'm just using DAE. And I'm going to dump this one out to here rock2.dae and hit OK. So that's done. Now we're going to open Lightwave. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to type Lightwave. Uh, actually, we'll type layouts. There we go. Layout. So, Lightwave Layout opens. We're going to go load scene and we're going to jump up here and we're going to go rock 2 and we're going to tell it we want to load it. And you'll notice that our rock's sitting over here and it's facing the wrong direction. Quick and easy, modeler. Modeler will jump up and open. We're going to zoom out, we're going to rotate, rotate. And if we have a look, we can see it's definitely the same mesh. Now, we know this surface here is the one that was on the ground. We can tell that because we can see where it's closed the mesh. So, we'll just rotate that to something like that. That gives us our rock. We're going to sync this back with layout, close out. And if we look, we've got our rock here in. If we VPR, we can see that the rock is here. And at this point, it's ready for us to come in and start adding a displacement map. Um, more detailed texture, materials and the like. I mean, it's given us material. We have a UV map and the like. We can make a nodal map and start doing all the fun stuff. And the best part is, you've got detail in here you're not going to get easily procedurally. Um, there's a lot of fine detail that gets brought up in these maps. Um, 
the other option you've got is you could take this out in really really high poly into something like ZBrush or Topo Map or Topo Gun or something like that and des basically take all that high detail make a normal map and dump it down into something this size you know if we can see it's only 10k tries here and that's only because I set it to 10k tries um, and use whatever we want and I mean this it's quick it's easy and the like it's not the be all and end all um, as I got into a discussion a little bit on LightWiki with Renee um, we could most likely make this just as quickly if not faster by hand um, but it has its uses. It's another tool in the toolbox for people to start using. And if you're after rocks or the like, and you got a camera, it's a good easy way of getting them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.